If this is your first time listening, my name is Brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Mr. Sam Lopez. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study, where we get into the Word of God around 25 to 30 minutes, right here at SoulWinnersWithAZ.org. We're available as a free podcast on all the major podcast networks, all the channels, everywhere where you could catch a podcast. Pretty much we're there. And if we're not, you could connect with me, con- contact me at DJ Sam Rock at Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G. And I'll find out why I'm not on that network. Amen. But for the most part, we're on the major ones. All glory to God. And we welcome you. I want to say a special thanks you to the supporters and the prayer supporters and those who have donated into the ministry. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to go forward with more enthusiasm, with more power, with more authority, with more resources, because you're believing in what God is doing with this ministry. So therefore you're responding in ways of prayer and ways of giving. And uh, I thank you so much for that. And I pray 100 fold blessing return to you and your family. Amen. And on my iHeart listeners, thank you so much. What a big uh, support on iHeartRadio, also on TuneIn, also on the Apple podcast, um, everywhere, man, which which is um, really um, encouraging to see um, that there are really people out there that are hungry for the word of God and want to see, or maybe you're just curious and you want to know what this is all about, what this Christian lifestyle is all about. And if God is using this ministry um, to help you, amen, it's so worth it. It's so worth these podcasts, and that's why I move forward with it. So God bless you. Amen. We're going to be talking about how many times... Did you give in to temptation? How many times did you and I give in to temptation? Amen. If you know me, if you've been following me, amen, you know my testimony had a lot to do with temptation. As I failed and fell on my face flat before Jesus helped me out of those temptations, I had no clue. I had no power over those things, and I kept on falling in the same situation. But once I got saved, I got my weapons of warfare, amen, and literally I got saved and I asked God this, how am I going to not go back to the old ways of doing things? How am I going to stop doing this? How am I going to stop doing that? How um, am I going to respond or how am I going to react or how am I going to defend myself when temptation does come? Literally, that was one of the first things I asked the Lord, amen, because I was like, I'm not dumb, I'm saved now, but what does that mean? I heard about this thing called backsliding when Christians get saved and they go right back because they get tripped up with the temptation, tripped up with the old habit or whatever. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to fall back. Amen. And if that's you and you fell back into the same temptation that really had you bound and had you in prison, had you locked into that thing. Amen. I'm going to pray you out right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for that person right now that is really going back into their old situations. I pray them out right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you came to separate the good and the evil. You came to free us. And you say in your word, Lord Jesus, who the son sets free is free indeed. Father God, I pray freedom forward in the name of Jesus by faith in your love and your grace and your mercy over their lives. I pray, Holy Spirit, God, that you will reactivate and reinvigorate and re-inspire all those born again believers that are struggling right now with temptation. Father God, I pray them out of there in the name of Jesus. You say in your word that no temptation has seized them except what is common to man and you are faithful and you will not let them be tempted beyond what they can bear but when they are tempted you lord god will provide a way of escape so i pray that way of escape will be found right now in the name of jesus and for all other people listening right now that are dealing with temptation that are struggling in their faith that are uh, on the fence with being born again. Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit right now will really convict them of their sin and convince them of who you are in your love and your grace and your mercy, your justice, your holy and your loving. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. So I counted done because I believe in the power of prayer. I counted done because I believe in God's word. But this man that we're going to speak about in the book of Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 5, this man was a king. And this man, God said, not me, because I would never have called this man a man after God's own heart. But God himself called this king, King David, a man after his own heart. 
In other words, this man, David, King David, amen, God said, yeah, that's, that's one of mine. He's a man after my heart, amen. And that's incredible if you ever read um, the story of King David from when he was young all the way out to when he had his own sons and his own family. The situations he kept on going through and had to go through and he was being chased by so many people. They wanted to kill him. Um, there was a uh, King Saul was jealous of him and all this other stuff. But listen, he was the anointed one of God, called to be king, called to be set apart. He messed up, but he knew how to repent. He knew how to turn from his wicked ways and turn to God. He knew how to stop and, and present all the stuff that he was going through to the Lord. And I believe that's why God said he's a man after his own heart. So let's go into it. Second Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 to 5. The Bible says, In the spring of the year, when kings normally go out to war, David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonite army and laid siege to the city of Rabbah. However, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. So right off the bat, you already see that David usually would be at war with his army but instead he took this time off and he sent Joab instead and the Israelite army to fight against the enemy and he's still behind very important to notice and to take a note of that in this scripture that King David stood behind while his army and his people were at war and he stood behind amen so the way, I, the way I see that is that he was idle. He was supposed to be about his business, but he stood back. And while everybody was away, he found himself alone, pretty much. Let's keep on going. Late one afternoon, after his midday rest, so he was well rested. He wasn't tired, right? He wasn't drunk with wine or anything like that. After his midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of his palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. So already the Bible is describing this woman as unusually beautiful. So King David's eyes were stuck. Amen. You ever had a situation where you found somebody that was attractive and you find your eyes stuck? Well, King David's eyes were stuck on this beautiful woman taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was. And he was told this, she is Bathsheba, so now he knows her name, the daughter of Elim and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So now King David knows the information he sent. He inquired about this beautiful woman. Now he has a name, who, who's her dad, and who's her husband. Now he knows it all. Or well, at least the most important things about this woman. He sent someone to find out who she was, and they told him. Then David sent messengers to get her on top of the fact that he already knew she was married on top of the fact that he might have known her dad on top of the fact that, you know, she was a woman um, that was married, which is the key thing here. She King David sent messengers to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. Now, we don't know if he forced it upon her. All I know is that during those times from my Bible studies, right? You don't say no to the king. So if they send for you, you go. Male, woman, boy, girl. You go because, you know, if you say no, that can mean a lot of problems to you, your family, or it could mean death, depending on what king was in the kingship at the time. So he sent someone to find out who she was. Then he sent messengers to get her. And then he slept with her. She had just completed the purification rites after having menstrual period. Then she returned home. Later, when Bathsheba discovered that she was pregnant, she sent David a message saying, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. The two words that any young guy that's listening that you heard that for the first time, you're like, whoa, it's a life changer, isn't it? So David got the word and said, whoa, um, his life was about to change. And that's a whole lot, a lot of mess right there because he knows um, he probably knew the dad, her dad. He, he probably knew Uriah. I'm pretty sure he did because if you read the scriptures further, he did know this man, young man to be uh, a loyal soldier in his army. And she was married. 
but yet he sent for her because why? If you read the beginning, he stood behind while his people were at war. That's number one. Number two, after he was rested up, so he can't blame it on, oh, I was a little tired. He can't blame it on drunkenness or, he, you know, he was rested, fully awake, and walking on his palace rooftop when he saw this unusual, beautiful woman. The Bible says this, he noticed the woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I don't know if you want to uh, edit this out or if you want to take your children and tell them to go somewhere else and come back to what I'm going to say right here. But uh, she must have been naked if she was taking a shower, a bath, bathing. So therefore, King David saw this unusual beauty, naked beauty as well. So now the temptation for any man right now, you could probably think in your head, wow, you're probably even getting an image of how King David was like, I need to know who this is. Some people keep on saying that this word of God is not relevant, but I don't know if temptation is relevant anymore. What about you? I don't know if people are still being tempted out there. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm all alone on an island that I'm the only one that has to deal with temptation. And it doesn't have to be sexual temptation. It could be an eating temptation. It could be you're trying to um, get to a certain goal in your weight and in your health, but you have frozen pizzas in your freezer and it's two in the morning. Nobody's around. Now the temptation is king stomach or king, you know, whatever you're trying to get your goal but your king's stomach is saying, go get that pizza, put it in the microwave or put it in the oven and don't worry about it. So it could be an eating temptation. It could be a sexual temptation. It could be a temptation to, to curse. It could be a temptation to um, play video games and binge out on video games for like 18 hours or something like that. I've known people to, that do that. And then you have to go to work or school the next day. And now you're uh, in a bad in a bad situation. You're in bad shape. So that's the temptations could be in so many different ways. So David did all of this after he knew who she was. He still sent for her. He slept with her. The Bible says clearly. And now she's pregnant. And now she sends David word. So how many times did David give into temptation in this story? In the short, these passages. Well, I can already count two, three. Remember in the, in the spring of the year when Kings normally go to war. David stood back, so he was already tempted, like, ah, should I go or shouldn't I go? And his temptation was to stay behind. I'm the king. Um, I fought a lot of wars already. You know, I'll just stay behind. That's the temptation. Because normally the scripture says that kings would be out there at war with their soldiers. Also, the temptation to, you know, why did he have to get up so early? I don't know. He already had his nap. He already had his midday rest. Um, walking around, looking around. I mean, that's not a temptation, I don't think. But what happened was um, the same thing that happened to me before I got saved. Amen. Minding my own business. And one, one day driving by a gas station and I see uh, a girl or, or some people that I used to deal with before. And the temptation was to go and find out who these people were that they were hanging out with, the new, the new faces. So David saw a new face. Maybe he saw this woman for the very first time in all her splendor, all her beauty, because she was bathing. And now the temptation was, well, I'm the king. Uh, let me find out who she is. After he found out who she was, the temptation was, now should I leave her alone and mind my own business? Or should I just play my kingdom, my kingship role? I'm the king, so let me send for her. That must have been a temptation too. So that's two. Um, and also the temptation to sleep with her. I'm pretty sure... Um, you know, the Bible doesn't say if she was forced or anything like that, but I could imagine that he could have said, no, you know what, forget it. The right thing to do is for me to respect your husband and, and, you know, and let it go. So it must've been a temptation for him, whether he should go ahead with what he felt like doing or respect and honor her husband. That's number three. Now she sends word back to David that she's pregnant and I could uh, imagine the next temptation would be, well, I could know because I already read the scriptures that he wanted to invent some kind of plan or disown this child by saying that this child was this, the child of Uriah. 
and he was trying to set up Uriah, right, to go back to be with his wife. So he sent for Uriah, the Hittite, told him to come back and go be with his wife. But if you read the scripture in the story, he didn't want to do it. He was lured to the king while he was supposed to be with his wife. So that way David could say, oh, she's pregnant. That's your kid. And he would have got out of the way, which is grimy, right? That's not right either. either. But he was really uh, mistaken. And the loyal Uriah stood in front of King David's like palace looking out for him while King David was hoping that he would go and be with his wife. It's crazy. This is a real king, real situation, real story. Amen. And temptation is all over these scriptures. So do you feel there's a progression of temptation in your life? You think like something happens or you might see something, you might uh, respond a certain way to certain things that you hear. And when people tell me, especially the young people, oh, you know, I listen to secular music, which is worldly music, um, music that really taunts and praises the values of this world system. That's what secular music is. And they go, it's, it's not Christian. They don't curse, so it's not bad. But when you hear the content and you hear the music and you see the music videos, you're like, wait a minute. If this is good, I don't, I don't want to know what bad is. <laughs> So we have to be careful with what we see, what we hear. Amen. Music videos right now for the next gen um, that's coming up and the generation right before me, even in my generation when it was first coming out, music videos carry so much power. You might not like a song or you might like might not like an artist, but when you see their video, you might like, whoa, this is, I like this person now. Why? Because you're getting a visual to what people say. Temptation gives you a visual to what you're thinking. Temptation gives you a voice to what you were um, being tempted. Like you could be good for years, born again, going to church and leadership. You could be a preacher, evangelist, a prophet, apostle, a pastor, teacher. You could be um, all of those, right? Or one of those at least and still deal with temptation. And what happens is whatever you see, whatever you <clears throat> listen to, how you how you interact with other people could spark up something so small that it would turn into a big blaze of fire and it will burn your whole life down. Simple temptation. If you if you I heard it like this when I was young in my faith, um, the youth pastor of my church that I was going to, he used to say we shouldn't entertain those type of thoughts. Thoughts that would lead you to, into your old situations. Thought that would get you astray from God. You know, and I used to think about, what is he talking about? You know, not entertain those things. And boy, I used to entertain some thoughts. And then I was like, wait a minute. Then I saw the scripture about taking my thoughts and making them uh, obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. Keeping them captive. Give it to Jesus so he could capture those thoughts and keep them obedient to him. So that way those thoughts, when they come back, they're clean now. Now you could deal with it. Amen. And always, 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 if you're dealing with temptation and we all do some way or another deal with temptation, temptation to steal, to lie, to cheat, you know, all kind of temptations. But when you're at that place in that crossroad, road, my suggestion is to memorize first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. That scripture is one of my lifeline scriptures, and it got me out of a world of trouble. It got me out from being backslidden. It got me out from um, just going back to my old ways. It, God saved me so many times using that word, that scripture that I memorized and spoke it out my very own mouth over people, over situations. Yeah, sometimes you just got to go for it. That's how serious temptation could get. So do you feel that there's a progression of temptation in your life? That's something you could think about right now. You'd be like, whoa, yeah, you know, a little thing here, a little thing there. You know, one plus one equals two. Next thing you know, wham, bam, and you, it could take you out. Really could take you out. This is very serious when you think about it. Look what happened with David. He was pretty much minding his own business. He wasn't about his business, but he was mind. at least he was minding his own business until he got his idleness out there and he just locked eyes with a situation with a person that was doing something that's private intimate i don't know how the culture was if she was in an open shower or whatever or open i don't know all i know is that he saw what i think he should not have seen during the time that he saw her 
Amen. But on top of that, he had enough information to say, you know what? The right thing to do is to leave her alone. But the temptation got <clears throat> over him. He was hit, I guess, with all these ideas all at one time and him being in a place of authority. And you see this to this very day in our year now that the people that have authority, uh, they feel like they could do with whatever they want, with whoever they want, to whoever they want without consequences. But David <clears throat> got consequences really fast when uh, Bathsheba told him that she was pregnant. Now there was a big issue. So the temptation actually gave birth because he fell into, to, into temptation. That temptation gave birth to a child that was coming now. Your temptation could give birth to maybe theft, stealing, or it could be overeating, or it could be um, um, video game binging. It could be um, lack of attention when you're at school. It could be hanging out with the wrong crowd. So those temptations that you're not taking care of or you're thinking, ah, oh, it's just I could get over it. Those things could really take you out, take you down. Amen. Um, and that's not my hope for you. My hope is that you would take heed and listen to the voice of God. When, it, when the voice of God says, look, no temptation has seized you. In other words, the temptation will come, but it doesn't have you in prison. It doesn't have to be your master. It doesn't have to take you down, take you out. No, God said he will provide a way of escape so you can stand strong under that thing. But he knows, God knows that we will be tempted. Now, God himself can never be tempted less does he tempt. God will test us, but he will never tempt us, especially with evil. You know, a lot of people get this all mixed up. Oh, God made me go through this evil or he tempted me. I used to say before I got saved, I used to always think that God was tempting me with something. So that way he could say, oh, I got you when I will fall into that thing. And then I realized when I got into when I got saved and the Lord started speaking these scriptures into my life. And started showing me, he says, look, I'm God, I don't tempt. I will test your faith. I will test this, that, and the third in your life. Test and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And then he says in Malachi, test me when it came to giving and all that. And see if I won't pour out a blessing over your life. So God will test us, but he will not tempt us, especially with evil. Amen? With evil. Some people pray the Lord's Prayer, uh, and it's inaccurate, unfortunately, the translation that we pray the Lord's Prayer out of, for the most part, is wrong. It says, lead us not into temptation. Listen, God doesn't lead us into temptation because God does not tempt us. He tests us. Amen? So it's things like that, that when we understand and we have Holy Spirit God teaching us and showing us what His ways are more and more, and it becomes more clear to us. Amen? So if you have something small in your life, and you're not checking that and you're saying, oh, that's cool. I could deal with it. I have willpower. Listen, willpower led me to the bad road. I was a year married and I thought I had willpower not to go back to my old ways, not to cheat on my wife, not to start, you know, start doing all this, that and the third and, you know, trying to honor my wife, minding my own business, driving home. I think I was and I seen something just like David saw something and it drew him into this whole scenario of temptation. Should I? Should not? And I felt bad into those temptations. Amen. Didn't have no power of God, no power of Holy Spirit. I wasn't saved. So willpower ran out real fast on me when I was trying to be like, no, you know what? I'm married. It's down the third. No one at that time could have cared less whether I was married or not. And evidently, since they were um, being tempted in their situations, I was being tempted in my situation. Tempted people started getting together, people who were tempted. And we just did what we wanted to do, when we wanted to do with whoever we wanted to do it with. And that was a bad situation. You might find yourself in that situation right now. You'd be like, well, how do I get out of it? Well, I'm glad you asked. I got out of it. I fell. I got out of it this way. After I did all what I wanted to do in this world and in life, smoke, drugs, um, uh you know, sex, drugs, violence, all that party life. After I did it all, got the T-shirt, the scars, and, you know, it left me more uh, abandoned in my thinking, left me lonely, it left me disgusted with myself. And after I tried everything that the world offered, and they said that, oh, if you do this and you do that, it will get you to a place of, yeah, man, you the man, you the woman, whatever. I was like, yeah, I've been lied to. 
I figured out I was being lied to because I was like, if I, if, it, if I was supposed to be happy doing everything that the world said to do, why ain't I? Why aren't I happy? I did everything the world said to do. And look, you know, and Jesus came at that moment in that time when I said, okay, I did everything in the world. Okay, next, you're up, God. You're next up to bat. If you're real, come and change me. That's my testimony, and God changed me. That's how you know that when temptations come to your life, if you feel like you're bound to it, guess what? Without Jesus, without Holy Spirit, God, without the power of God's word in your life, guess what? You're literally bound to that temptation. You can't even say no to sin. You can't even say no to nothing that tempts you. That's why it's so important, amen, to walk the faith, live it out. Amen. Surround yourself with other believers. Surround yourself with people of faith. Surround yourself with people that you know are changing. Surround yourself with people who know the word of God, who live the word of God, who don't just speak it, but they live it. If you want, you can walk with me. Amen. I'm trying my best. Amen. Because I have a uh, family watching. I have a uh, honorable wife that's watching. I have children. I have a son um, from the time it's recording that I don't want to let down. Amen. He's my oldest. And I want to walk this thing out so that way he could see and his my granddaughter could see the next generation could see that I lived this thing out real. And there was real results and there was real power in my life. There was real authority with the word of God. There was real things happening. So that way, you know, everybody won't say, oh, you know, he was cool. He was into that religion stuff. No, I'm not into no religion stuff. I'm into the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The person and the power and the passion of the Christ. Amen. And he's good. So if you ever felt like you were in temptation and it was progressing in your life, the next thing you should ask is, what is it concerning? Is it concerning how you want to live? Is it concerning how other people want you to live? Is it concerning um, you have a lack of something, so you're tempted to get something from somebody else by any means necessary to make yourself feel better? It could be so many different angles. But listen, temptation is no friend, right, of uh, any human being on this planet. Amen? If we don't have temptation under control, then temptation will have us under control. And the only way I see, and I've been living on this earth for a little bit now, I can't see myself getting out of any type of situation when it comes to temptation other than the power of God in my life. You might say, okay, I have my own God. Um, you know, I'm following this religion, that religion, and it talks about temptation. Amen. Um, let's see how good that'll work for you. Amen. I'm not saying that if you're in another religion outside of Christianity that you can't, you know, develop some <clears throat> practices or some habits <clears throat> that will keep you straight and narrow, but I am saying it will run out eventually. But the love of God will never run out. The power of God will never run out. His word will never run out. His Holy Spirit, if it lives, if he lives in you, not it, if he lives in you, will never leave you, abandon you. He will always teach you how to walk this thing out. He will lead you to all truth, and he will guide you through it all. He will be in the storm with you, amen, to get you through the storm. And sometimes he'll take the storm away. But 90% of the time, or even more, when I had a time of storms and trials and troubles and temptations, he didn't stop those things. He actually walked in those things with me and got me out. And when we got out, when I looked back, I was like, wow, only God. Amen. So I hope you're blessed. Uh, I got this all out of 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. Listen, I prayed in the very beginning, so if you would miss the prayer, rewind this and hear the prayer because it's for you. For those who are trying hard to not fall into these temptations, whatever those temptations in your life would be, amen, I want to encourage you. I want to convince you, but I can't convince you that God is real. I can't convince you that Jesus is Lord, but Holy Spirit God will do the convincing. Holy Spirit God will do the convicting, and then when you Give your life to him, amen, to the Lord and Savior Jesus, amen. He'll forgive you for all your trespasses, your sins. He will fill you with his spirit, and then he'll work things out with you when it comes to temptation in that area, amen. If King David was called a man after God's own heart, amen, I'm believing that I could be called that too, that you could be called that too, because his life wasn't perfect. He got into some messy situations. If you read about him, you're going to see those messy situations, but yet he knew how to turn from those things and turn to God and ask God for forgiveness. Amen. So I hope you are blessed. God keep you. God bless you. Remember always that God is good. Peace until the next time. I'm out. Peace.